What's up guys, Alec Ankiri here. And today I wanna to talk about a topic that I think is really one that's often glossed over in today's fitness industry, and that is the widespread conflation of generalized strength training with powerlifting specific training. So in modern YouTube, we all we have all these hypertrophy biased guys, right? The, the Noble Natties, for example, they're all basically hypertrophy biased trainees. Um, I would say I'm distinct from them in that I'm not a hypertrophy biased trainee. And, and, and the rest of those guys, they vehemently defend the distinctions between training for strength versus training specifically for hypertrophy, right? But then there's, on the flip side of that, there's nobody really left to vehemently defend the distinction when it comes to general strength training versus powerlifting specifically. And powerlifting has become popular enough now that it is often viewed as strength training in totality. But the reality is that it is not. And so that is kind of the topic that I want to cover today. Because I've dabbled in both. And I think that there are some pretty important distinctions that a lot of lay people don't necessarily understand, especially as the bulk of the strength training information that they are inundated with comes from the powerlifting circles, right? So now I, I actually did write an article on this exact topic way back in 2019. It's still published today on my website. I'll link that in the description below here. And so what I want to do today is I want to read that article to you guys, kind of like story time. Now, I don't even necessarily agree with everything that I myself wrote on this specific topic back in 2019, but I do think that it is just a very important topic to be covering. And I think that somebody needs to kind of get the ball rolling on here because there's a lot of valuable to be discussion to be had by having this conversation, by getting this conversation started at all. So I hope that you guys enjoy. I hope that you find the video helpful and informative. Please remember to smash the like button before you go and leave me a friendly comment down below as well, telling me your thoughts on this particular topic. Now let's jump right into it. With the advent of social media and the reintroduction of raw powerlifting federations, powerlifting and powerlifting style training have exploded in popularity in recent years and become somewhat of a niche phenomenon. This has had many positive effects on the fitness community as a whole. It has encouraged many people who otherwise would not have done so to embrace barbell training as opposed to machine or dumbbell only style training and training to get stronger, creating objective, tangible improvements in the physical capabilities of their body. It has also encouraged many women to start lifting weights so that they can build strength and muscle instead of just going to the gym trying to get quote unquote toned and it has simultaneously drastically reduced the stigma that has long been attached to those women who have previously bravely ventured into this realm before these are all good things having a physically capable body is very important strength training can improve overall quality of life increase bone mineral density help keep elderly people independent for longer and help stave off a whole host of other ailments the more people who partake in this endeavor the better however this rapid explosion in the popularity of powerlifting has also brought with it a great deal of confusion in regards to what the aims of strength training actually are versus how they relate to the sport of powerlifting and training for that sport in particular. Today, I want to address one of these points of confusion, and that is the widespread total conflation of generalized strength training with powerlifting training. I myself trade for overall strength, power, and the enhancement of general athleticism. And the foundation for all of these things is the strength training that I perform. I consider this framework to be both my passion and my forte. I have also competed in several powerlifting competitions over the years, ultimately totaling 1,388 pounds at a body weight of 162 pounds in raw powerlifting competition. So here's kind of what I wanna go into today. One, the actual tangible differences between training for powerlifting specifically and general strength training. Two, the potential applications of general strength training as compared to powerlifting specific training. And three, why people confusing all strength training as powerlifting matters. 
So let's start with the first point, the tangible differences between the two endeavors. When training for powerlifting, you have three concerns and three concerns only. The maximum amount of weight that you can squat for one rep, the maximum amount of weight that you can bench press for one rep, and the maximum amount of weight that you can deadlift or sumo deadlift for one rep. As a whole, that is a somewhat limited scope, and focusing on it and it alone at the expense of everything else is going to lead to many holes in other places. These holes should be considered unacceptable for someone who does not intend to compete at a high level in powerlifting or for someone who does not care if they are truly maximizing their absolute genetic potential on those three lifts alone or not. Therefore, when training for general strength development as opposed to powerlifting specifically, you by default have many other concerns as well. Personally, I find this to be somewhat freeing of a concept. Yes, it means you have more to worry about overall and more bases to cover in your training, but it also means that you don't have to worry about whether only those three lifts are improving or not, because you can use 100 other lifts in their place instead in order to continually build strength. If you don't feel like back squatting, you can do a zombie front squat. If you're bored of the bench press, you can focus on your overhead press off of pins. If your deadlift is stagnant, then learn how to do a power snatch or hit some heavy kettlebell swings instead. The possibilities are endless, but the point is you are no longer confined to such a limited number of lifts and their immediate derivations. And perhaps even more importantly, progress is no longer viewed through such a narrow scope. Now you can do anything you want. You can make any big taxing exercise your primary exercise. Ultimately, getting stronger across a variety of exercises is actually going to make you a more well-rounded individual. Now, it may not maximize your powerlifting total, but on the whole, it is quite likely that in the long run, you will actually end up being stronger overall, more overall resilient, and less beat up. Another thing to consider is rep ranges. When training for powerlifting, you have to be good at doing max singles. There's simply no way around it. If you aren't good at max singles, then you aren't a good powerlifter, point blank, and you are leaving pounds on the platform. Getting good at this task, however, takes a lot of practice. In fact, many of the modern powerlifters practice heavy singles in their training pretty much year round. But that practice can be very draining, both physically and mentally, and it can also invite injury. That's just the cost of doing business. The good news is, when training for general strength and not worrying about powerlifting specifically, you don't ever have to do a heavy single if you don't want to. Never, not even once. Busting out max singles is a skill. If you don't practice it, you won't be good at it. Therefore, to be a good power lifter, you must practice it. But ultimately, when training for general strength, you can build just as much overall strength by doing heavy sets of three to five reps until your damn ears bleed and never doing a single or maxing out on a lift in your entire life if you don't want to. This is less stressful on the nervous system, less stressful on connective tissues, less stressful psychologically, and less likely to cause injury. Maximal weight is not necessary for building maximal strength. Heavy weight is necessary for building maximal strength, but maximal weight is only necessary for displaying that strength. It took me a long time to fully grasp this concept, but this is a very important distinction that must be noted as removing this part of the equation negates a great deal of the risk that is present during this endeavor and makes it much more user friendly to a much larger population of people. There is no need to display maximal strength or practice the act of displaying it unless you are competing in a strength sport that requires you to do so general strength training and even training for athletics and improvement at traditional sports absolutely do not have this requirement and thus all the benefits of strength training can be reaped for these endeavors without ever dipping your toes into that pool of extra risk 
Now that we've covered the major technical differences between the two activities, let's touch on the different applications of them. I kind of already unwittingly divulged some of these applications in the previous segment, but let's take a deeper look anyway. So true powerlifting training with all of its specifications and idiosyncrasies should be viewed as applicable only to the sport of competitive powerlifting. This seems obvious when you say it, but there are people who don't acknowledge this fact. Those people are only painting you a portion of what truly training to maximize your powerlifting total entails. But there is a lot that goes into it that simply does not translate into anything else beyond it, thus rendering it pointless in other applications. Things like overly wide stance sumo deadlifts, overly wide grip bench presses with a massive arch, and ultra low bar or wide stance style squats all have absolutely no place beyond the sport of competitive powerlifting. These things are not necessities for training for powerlifting by any stretch of the imagination. However, many high level competitors do use them to their advantage because they help them to maximize their powerlifting totals. The problem is that due to the more extreme positions that are present, many of these technical manipulations tend to place more stress on the applicable joints, namely the hips, shoulders, and lower back, than their less extreme counterparts. They also overemphasize the development of the hips and they drastically reduce the range of motion of the lifts and thus the total work that is performed. Collectively, this is going to reduce the carryover that these, these lifts have into general strength and into other non-barbell based activities while also placing undue stress and strain on certain joints, which simply makes them unsuitable variations for people who do not have competitive aspirations. Couple this with the fact that these lifts are often maxed out or simply performed for max singles, which as I just pointed out is also an unnecessary practice for maximal strength development, and you have a recipe for something that is not only potentially injurious, but also relatively pointless if your goal is not just to put up the absolute biggest total that you can. As a side note, this is why it's also so incredibly important for competitive lifters to give themselves a sizable offseason. This gives them the opportunity not only to take a break from the ultra heavy work and benefit from the physical and mental reprieve that that entails, but also to incorporate more exercise variety and focus on building up their base and not have worry about having to be peaked all of the fucking time. With Instagram, it seems like there are many lifters who feel that they have to be able to match their personal bests every single week of the year, but this simply isn't feasible, especially as you move up the ladder of experience. Now, drugs might let you get away with this for a while, but in all likelihood, these permanently peaked lifters are going to have very short careers. Lastly, it's also one thing to practice these sorts of movements after you have spent several years building up a generalized base of formidable strength and muscle. But with the explosion in popularity of raw powerlifting, you have many very young and very inexperienced trainees practicing these powerlifting specific training methods with no base to stand on or fall back onto. Of course, not every high level powerlifter trains this way or even competes this way, but many of the younger and more exper inexperienced lifters seem to be gravitating towards at least some of these lift variations, such as the wide stance sumo deadlift, the big arched wide grip bench press, or the very low bar and very wide stance squat. They probably gravitate towards these variations because they allow them to lift more weight initially. Along with that, they tend to gravitate towards frequent max out sessions because they're young and excited and ambitious, and they pair that with these overly specific training methods, whether they intend to compete or not, as many people ultimately never end up competing. Just like when you specialize in any sport too prematurely, Overuse, injuries, and suboptimal compensations are going to become par for the course, and these things will bite you in the ass eventually. It's not a question of if, but simply when. Now contrast this powerlifting style training with general strength training, where the goal is simply to build as much overall strength, power, muscle, and bodily resilience as possible, and the applications of this approach are much more broad sweeping. 
Here, I'm talking about an approach similar to what would probably be considered power building, but with the addition of true power and conditioning work and sans a lot of the fluff that is often contained in bodybuilding style program. The meat and potatoes of the program are going to be a squat, a hip hinge, a press, a pull, something explosive for the lower body, maybe something explosive for the upper body, and some form of conditioning work to tie it all together. You would focus mostly on progressively building up your standard straight set rep schemes, e.g. 5x5, 5x3, 4x6, 3x8, etc, etc with occasional forays into auto-regulated training territory where you're then able to ramp up to heavy sets of three, four, or five reps and throw in a back off set or two afterwards for brief periods of time. You rotate through exercises and set slash rep schemes after every few months when things become stale or when you simply get bored of what you're doing. But the point is, you're not tethered to any specific exercise variations or rep schemes. You don't have to be able to max out your lifts on any particular day or ever, and you can focus on other things that are typically neglected by traditional powerlifting training, such as conditioning work and power development. All you have to do is eat well, sleep well, be consistent, and focus on quality reps while slowly adding weight to the bar over time on your primary exercises. This approach is much more applicable to a much broader range of things. The carryover across the board is going to be immense and is going to be present in pretty much everything else that you do outside of the gym. Whether your goal is to get bigger, stronger, and faster for your sport, be super fit and healthy in general, or just be capable of handling any task that life throws your way. This is the basis of general strength training, and this is comprehensive fitness. Powerlifting as a focused and elite endeavor is not. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't use aspects of powerlifting training to our advantage, but I do think that it's important to point out that these competitive exercises existed before powerlifting existed. They have been adopted by the sport of powerlifting, and powerlifting is simply borrowing them and molding them around its ideals. It is not the other way around. Thus, using these competitive exercises or their immediate variations does not mean that you have to go all in with powerlifting training. Take away what is applicable to everybody, the aspects and ideas that would make anyone a better lifter. For example, become a student of lifting technique like powerlifters are and learn how to lift the most weight in the safest and most efficient fashion possible. Learn how to master auto-regulated training using the RPE scale, another thing that's very popular in powerlifting these days. Pause the majority of your bench press reps on your chest in order to build more raw upper body strength and power while hopefully reducing your risk of a shoulder or chest injury. So you take the applicable parts that will make you a better lifter and you simply discard the rest unless your goal is to maximize your powerlifting total. Before someone jumps down my throat, I feel obligated to mention that I'm in no way, shape, or form suggesting that people who practice purely powerlifting style training are not strong. They are immensely strong, and they are far, far stronger than I could ever hope to be, especially at the elite level. However, the difference between me and them is that they are trying to become capable of maximally displaying their immense strength in a very specific fashion. And that very specific fashion is not necessarily conducive to other goals outside of that endeavor, of which I personally have many. They are trying to become the best and strongest power lifter that they can be, not the strongest, fittest, and most well-rounded versions of themselves that they can be. To accomplish the latter goal, requires more than the highly narrow focus that powerlifting entails, and to accomplish the former goal requires ignoring many of the things that make you more well-rounded. So that is quite the conundrum. But the fact is the vast majority of people who lift weights don't ever actually plan to step on a powerlifting platform. And who cares? There's no reason for them to do it if they don't want to do it. And using the generalized approach that I described above, 
these people can still achieve most of the squat, bench press, and deadlift gains that they otherwise would have achieved using a powerlifting specific program. So if that's a goal that they want to get close to their potential in squat, bench, and deadlift, they can still get to that point but they can do so while simultaneously building more overall strength throughout their body and likely muscle as well, developing their ability to produce power, which has been shown to be re related to all-cause mortality, and also while improving their conditioning. And this is an approach that I use with the vast majority of my clients. Most people who come to me, they want a stronger squat, bench, and deadlift, right? They want to be stronger, but they also want something that's more well-rounded and something that's more comprehensive as well. And so I know that this is a viable approach because this is basically what I do. And so this is simply a more comprehensive version of fitness because it, it isn't tethered to maximizing performance in a singular sport or event. And that simple fact makes it far more likely to have positive transfer into a multitude of different arenas, right? Strength is the basis of all movement. And what we do is strength training. And so strength training should prepare you for anything, right? It should build you up in totality rather than pigeonhole you or make you into a three trick pony. And so that is why these are distinct endeavors and they should be viewed as such. Obviously there's gonna be some overlap, but they're simply not the same thing. Thus, the training required to maximize each goal is ultimately going to be very different and the two ideas should no longer be conflated.